Hello there, this is Scoggle with another FOE Training Grounds bot lane series. Today we're featuring Caitlin with a new new support. And we are going against Varus and Janna. At the moment, Caitlin has a kill and it was on Varus. And the support Janna was able to get the kill back. So that's where we're at. We're at 21 CS to 20 CS and Caitlyn just basically has the one Doran's lead. While Nunu's not in lane, she's got to kind of be a little bit afraid of getting 2v1, but she does. she kites really well. If you watch her play, this Caitlyn is just kiting very well. Just able to get a hit in, back up, get a hit in, back up. And that's kind of the advantage of Caitlyn. She has that range, so if you're really good at positioning, you can do a lot with it. And here, this is silly to me. I, I just see a tower right behind him, and he's just going to try to fully engage right outside of it so that it's a, just an open field engage when you're right by your tower. I see this a lot. I don't quite understand it. Take advantage of, the adva of what you have. You don't have to man up and fight them because they're coming at you. You got so many abilities to get back, and that Janna, I think, was taken by surprise. It's just not a good idea to try to fight that close to your tower. Even if you've used Ignite and you think you have to go for it, don't go for it unless you know you can win that fight. And this is just really awesome. Vladimir comes in a gank. Janna's very low. And Caitlyn's just going to do a very good job of staying and kiting excellently. And then watch the heal bait. I love the heal bait. Caitlyn with heal, flash heal. There's the Ignite if you have already healed. The Ignite will basically just do what you just healed. So when he turns around to try to get this kill and thinks all I have to do is land Ignite, he's correct other than she heals right here. As soon as he turns around, heal. Just so clutch. And then lands the Q. There's nothing Vladimir can do. Lifesteal off the minions. Very, very good play by Caitlyn here. Push it out to the tower, leave your support there, and you get to go by. You just did very well for yourself, and now you're up by a little bit more. You've upgraded your boots and have a vamp scepter instead of just the uh, Dorans that she was up. So unfortunately for Varus, he has now died three times and is losing, nope, tied in CS. But Caitlyn is just such a good, such good range. She could just see us so well. And yes, that was an 80 carry with a ward. And here, Maokai comes in, and he's got an early oracle. So he kills the ward. Nunu's kind of guarding out there. But kind of doesn't do the best job, as you'll see. I mean, he's out there. He's kind of being the ward. And they're farming. Here comes Janna. So something's probably up if a low-life Janna's running at a Caitlyn. They see Maokai, and Caitlyn takes that one step forward. And this is all about champion knowledge. Normally that would be fine, but now you can't knock, use your your shoot your shoot that shoots you backwards, and you get snared by. Varus, and then you get snared immediately by Maokai. And so when you're going against double snares like that, your positioning is very, very is key. And even though she's been doing a great job, this Caitlyn has, this just is the one second of being out of position to get snared, and to get snared again, and there goes the shutdown. And unfortunately, that's quite a bit of gold back to Varus, and he can start making his comeback a little bit. And this is when people say you're being greedy. When you chase someone to get that kill, and there's three on one, you're basically, he could have gone out to the tower while they got Caitlyn, but he really wanted a kill. And he's rewarded with the one thing that was guaranteed out of all that. He was guaranteed a death. What he wasn't guaranteed was a kill. Especially when you're chasing Janna. She is not a champion to chase. She's fast. She gets a lot of movement speed with her kit. She has a knock-up. She has a knockback. And if you don't move when you do your ult, you heal. 
as you just saw. I think a lot of people don't realize that because a lot of Janas don't take advantage of it. They'll use their ult and they'll move immediately. But that Janna played it very well and New News punished for being greedy. So here Caitlyn's just doing an awesome job farming again, trying to get back ahead and farm. As Varus' kills did help him a lot catch up in that aspect of this game. And here's just the kite and the new new ult. And this is just so sad to see the fail. Just the Janna ult that sends a full new new into your carry guaranteeing a kill it's just here it is here's kind of the fail Nunu runs through and Varus this time is gonna go back first to the protection of his tower which he didn't do the time before he realizes he's in a lot of trouble and takes that cue and Nunu probably can't kill him here other than Gianna ults him Nunu picks up the kill here's the Caitlyn ult and with the shield keeps him alive but Nunu is right there and is able to pick up the next kill and Nunu with his consume can keep his life up a lot of the time and farm under a tower tank under a tower an extra, an extra second and so since that was pushed out Caitlyn doesn't want to sit there she goes and takes golems gets a lot of her life back because she has a lot of life steal and that's a lot better than staying in an exposed position. I really like that move. Something people should do more of. And I think they just don't think about it. And they stay in bad positions get ganked. That ends up getting two assists for Caitlyn. And two kills for Nunu. You wish the kills were a little better. But Nunu is able to pick up his third GP10 item. And that's going to help him a lot. And now Nunu's roaming though. So Caitlyn's left on her own. And this ends up... I mean, something that happens when you feel like you're ahead. You mean, Nunu gets the double kill. He's like, my lane's fine. But Caitlyn didn't get the double kill, so she's not far ahead. And here, Varus is able to really jump and put the hurt on Caitlyn. He's able to get out of tower range, get back in it. But Kate does enough damage that Varus dies for it. And so that exchange doesn't end up working out for Varus because they had the two-on-one, and they probably could have played this better and got a kill for nothing, or at least a kill for Janna. But no, gets the kill for a kill. 280 carries go down, kind of evening out the lane. Doesn't necessarily help. So, not necessarily great exchange. I think he thought he was going to get away with it. Just an unfortunate play for Varus and a very fortunate thing for Caitlyn because that could have helped get Varus staying right back in it. Um, Caitlyn is the BF Sword, the Vamp Scepter, and Varus is going with the movement speed and attack speed gets the zeal. And right now Caitlyn's up, just 12 CS and then one kill. So she's winning by a little bit, not by much, but by a little bit. And so Caitlyn's going to kind of freeze the lane. She doesn't want it to get out too far. She just wants to last hit. She just wants to farm. And she wants to be safe. Especially since Nunu's roaming again. I think it's a very good idea. If, you're, if your support starts roaming. Instead of staying with you. And they're able to dive you for it. Just kind of freeze the lane. And she, she did for a little bit. Now she's pushing again. But hasn't seen... I mean, there's been no sign of, uh, of her opponent. And that would be the end of this series, or this game, and we hope to see you again. Well, hello there. Now we're going to do the review to this game and see what we can learn out of it. First off, we started with the use your tower, number one. And that is referring to when you decide to fight someone and full engage, and you think you're strong, but if you're if you have a tower or a teammate nearby, there's really no reason to go man up and try to take them by yourself. You basically, if they dive you, are going to get a kill either for nothing, where it's not an exchange, or you'll at least kill them back. What Varus does in this game is he kind of stops and fights right by the tower. Janna was assuming they would go back to the tower, and he was fairly low before that fight starts. And if 
I always talk about champion knowledge, so I'll just bring it up real quick. We'll discuss it more later. But Nunu slows him and slows his attack speed so that he's not doing very much damage. And then he Nunu can blood boil Caitlyn so that Caitlyn has a huge attack speed buff. It's kind of like fighting an AD carry that has a frozen heart and a zeal on you. You're just going to... Their attack speed is going to come out so fast that if your abilities can't just blow them up, you're not going to win that exchange very likely. And moving on to number two, Kite Ganks. And what this means is you don't necessarily, if they don't have an advantage, have to full out run away and just take free damage and get back under your tower to a gank. You have, if you know your champion well, in this case, Caitlyn, Caitlyn was able to do a great job of getting away from Vladimir and able to just poke at him while backing up. And then she uses her, her parachute ability, I forget the name of it. I'll pull it up here in a second, but uses that, knocks herself back away from him to avoid the pool damage, the slow that the pool brings, and she's able to just kind of poke at people while backing up always. Even when she fights Vara, she's kind of, if she doesn't want to fully engage, she's always coming backwards and kiting, and that is the essence of kiting. You hit someone and you immediately move back while your auto attack's resetting, and then you hit them again. And you can do some damage while retreating. It does a couple things. One, if you do get killed, you could poke them low enough that they have to base or a teammate can come clean up or you can do something like go ahead and maybe pull off the kill because you use brush cover you use different things anyhow right into that kiting gank was our number three point which was the heal bait heal bait when you run heal on an ad carry and the reason you run it on ad carry and not support now is it doesn't do as much to your surrounding teammates as it does to you yourself so if a support like nunu who doesn't have a heal to throw onto the ad carry is in your lane you may want to consider heal here because if nunu runs heal the summoner spell you'll get very little out of it on a long cooldown now if you run heal you get a great amount not necessarily great, but a lot better amount of heal out of your summoner spell. So you have your heal that can save you, and you have your flash that can save you, and now you just have to play smart, play well, and farm well, because you're fairly safe in your late. As safe as you could be by summoner spells, really. And what the heal bait is, is when you take heal to keep yourself alive in those big fights, you can also do things like try to bait them to attack you while you're low life. If you can kill, if they're just above you, you can get, or your teammates are around, you can get them to dive at you because you're low life. People see a low life champion, gotta kill it. So what you can do is turn around and heal off of it and you will pick up the, your team will pick up the kill because you'll suddenly have a lot more life than they were expecting and they just did something stupid. That is what a, a heal bait entails. And the Caitlyn in this game did it excellently. Four, AD Carry Ward. And it's not advised, and I'm not going to go on here and say, hey, AD Carries, it's your job to ward. Pick up wards. Don't fail to ward. Now, on the other hand of that, I have seen a little bit of return. TD, I think it was Zig, was running the Riggles Lantern. So that's one possibility of getting a ward, and that can help you get brush bush control or your your support doesn't have a ward or he leaves for a minute or he dies and you need ward coverage you'd have that free ward but if you're not happy with where the wards are going down for your team or your support struggling to get gold for whatever reason instead of just playing blindly and being mad at your support yes you can do that and yes most people do that but how is that going to help you improve your win ratio it just doesn't it is the support's job, and I will agree with that argument all day. I'm not arguing that. What I'm saying is, what happens when you have that support that won't do his job? You have two choices. Play blind and get mad at him, start contention, and probably lose the game because now you're mad at your support. If you say something, your whole team's mad at the support. No one's getting along. It's a big gang up fest. Now your support doesn't care. He doesn't want to play with you anyways and you could lose just because you did that. The other thing you can do here is just pick up a few wards, help him out. He's struggling with gold for whatever reason, Run, the, grab, a, grab a ward or two, or get the Riggles Lantern. The Riggles Lantern also helps you, if you're not perfect at positioning, the armor the Riggles Lantern gives you is awesome, and the ability to do dragon really fast, or go get a buff, or go to a jungle camp, the Riggles Lantern has quite a few uses. It fell out of favor a little bit. 
I'll bet you I've seen it come back a little bit at the high-end competition. People don't put it in their builds on guides because it's unpopular, but that little bit of armor can really make a difference in the AD carry lane because they're AD. It's kind of like the top guy who grabs Ninja Tobby instead of any other type of boots because he's going against an AD. He may, he may or may not get wriggles, but you do things to win your lane, the Griggles can win the lane, and it gives you that free ward. A little bit level of safety, or you do what Caitlyn did in this game and just buy a ward. Don't buy a lot of wards because you don't want to slow your build too much. But you could buy a couple to make sure maybe at least the dragon route where you can cut off their blue ramp down and most of the river is covered. They still can get behind you, but it's not as bad. 5. Champion Knowledge. In this game, where we're bringing up Champion Knowledge is that double snare. When you're playing against Maokai in the jungle, what he, why his ganks are so strong is that snare, Twisted Advance. He jumps on you and you can't move for a second. When that was coupled with Varus's snare, it took one second of being out of position for Caitlyn to just be screwed, where she couldn't do anything about it. That's all it took. It just took... It just took that one step towards Janna, and Varus is able to ult, allowing Maokai to get into position to use his Twisted Advance, leaving you with two hard CCs that you cannot get away from. She shoots her parachute, and it doesn't even save her. It's just what happens. It wasn't really a bad play, it was just a slip, and that one second of not understanding exactly how fast they can lock you down. And that's why if you play a lot of champions, then you'll know that. Also, if you just think about it and think through it, every time you enter a game in the loading screen, think about your lane, what they can do to you, and what the jungler can do to you specifically. You can also consider the mid or the top or whatever, but just think specifically the person who will gank you the most is the jungler and the people in your lane. 6. Odd Behavior. This is when someone's probably trying to bait you. The first example of it would be, why did Caitlyn run towards that really full Vladimir when Vladimir has Ignite up? Well, Caitlyn had heal. That's what led to the, to the heal bait that I was excited about, that I thought was a great play. A heal bait happens because of odd behavior. Why would Caitlyn not just back out of that? She goes towards it because instead of Vladimir running away and getting safe, Vladimir's like, really? That's a mistake, and tries to punish it. Now, the second point of this is when Janna at low life and Varus is dead, runs at Caitlyn, and Caitlyn is like, really? Steps forward, oh, Varus was not dead, excuse me, I'm very wrong, but anyhow, a very low life uh, Janna runs towards Caitlyn and tries to tank. Well, Janna's not the tankiest. When Leona's running at you or Tarek's running at you, that might be more standard for an attempted engage. But not Janna. Janna doesn't engage like that. She doesn't try to just go face tank and AD carry, especially when she's under half-life. So if Janna's running at you, she's probably trying to take you to make you take that step forward, which she was. As soon as Caitlyn takes that one little step forward, that one little bit. She didn't get hard baited. She didn't do anything really stupid. She just took a step forward and Varus locks her down with a snare and in comes Maokai to lock to finish her off with the second snare. And that's what I'm talking about here. When they do something that is gonna lead to their death, basically why are they doing that? Are they baiting you? If they're not very good players, you're at a lower elo and they keep dying for it, go ahead and punish it. But be wary that, especially if they're running towards a brush, or, in that case, Maokai was likely there. He just destroyed the ward, and they were they had Nunu camping that brush because they felt Maokai was coming. So don't get baited when you think something could be happening. If you happen to have known that the jungler was top, go for it. Go jump on Janna. Punish her. But try to understand, is the mid in their lane, is the top in their lane, and do we have any idea where jungler is? 7. Chasing. In this case, and in most cases, chasing is greed. When you chase someone, either in this case, Nunu turns around and chases Janna in lane almost to the tower, and then with the other, with Varus and Maokai, where was he gonna go at even if he gets that kill? He's gonna get a kill and die for it. I guess as a support, you want that last GP10 item. It could possibly be worth it. 
but most of the time it is not worth it. And the one thing you're going to guarantee when you chase into a bad position is that you die. What you don't guarantee is that you'll actually catch them. A lot of people think, oh, they're low life, it's just going to take one more. Well, that one more can be really hard if they're fast or have escape skills. It's the one thing you have done when you chase is put yourself into a position where you can get killed very easily. A lot of times in, in games, normal games, but especially blind pick, I don't like playing blind pick for this reason. People don't really make smart decisions. They're just kind of going out trying to play it like it was Super Mario Smash Bros. and just trying to kill everyone and they don't care how often they die. But people chase. They love to lock on, see someone. If they think they're stronger, they chase. And then when a teammate comes, they're like, why didn't you 1v1 me? You too scared? Well, why would you 1v1 someone when you can just have them follow you right into a trap? Don't try to man up and fight them, just lead them to the trap. That's the important part. Like, here Janna runs to get safe to the tower, Nunu goes way out of position, easy kill on Nunu, when he could have just walked away. Just wasn't a good idea. And in most cases, chasing is not a good idea. If you're only chasing them a little bit, fine, but if you're going to lose a ton of CS for it, and then they get away, you lost a bunch of CS. Like the creeps are at your tower and you want to chase them and punish them for being at your tower well if you don't get that kill you get punished way harder because the tower is just going to obliterate that wave or two and you lost experience and gold and they did a great job of baiting you away from that tower even if you can't last hit at the tower you can get the experience for it and if you get more and more behind a little bit at a time they're gonna get ahead of you and finally, eight, getting dove. When you get dove, it just plain sucks. You usually don't get dove when they're weaker than you or when you could just turn around and destroy them for it. You get dove when they either have a number advantage or when you have when you, when they have a huge health, like your low life. What you should do when you're getting dove is consider the health of the tower and what their goals are. Are they trying to take the tower? You can go ahead, if you weren't going to be able to kill four people by yourself at a tower, you can go ahead and run away to the next tower. That's not necessarily the case of this game, but I just want to bring it up. You don't have to defend that tower with your life when you're just going to die for it no matter what, and if you die, then they're still going to take the tower. What's going to stop them? If your team's almost in position, you may want to stay there and try to bait them to coming in at you because they think you're vulnerable. But if you don't have help coming, you don't have to stay. The second thing, in this case, Varus was going to go at her, and if she runs away, Caitlyn's likely going to get caught and killed before she gets to her next tower. So the choice here is, how can I set up myself to do enough damage that they'll they'll pay for it and die for diving me. You'll want to focus on either the squishier champion or just one champion, don't split your damage, and try to do whatever you can to finish that off. Anyhow, that's the end of this review. Good luck in your future games, and I hope I helped.